Welcome to example program and in this video we will see how we can write a C sharp program to check whether the number entered by the user is a prime number or a composite number. Now what exactly is a prime number? A prime number is a natural number greater than 1 which has only two factors. They are 1 and the number itself. In other words, we can say that a prime number is a natural number greater than 1 which is completely divisible only by 1 and the number itself. For example, if we look at the number 3, then the factors of this number 3 are 1 and 3. Since this number 3 is greater than 1 and it is completely divisible only by 1 and 3 or it has only two factors, they are 1 and the number itself, this 3 is a prime number. And similarly, if you look at the number 7, then also we can find that only two factors, they are 1 and the number itself. So 7 is also a prime number. Now if you look at the number 6, then the factors are 1, 2, 3 and 6. Now this number 6 is greater than 1, but it has the factors other than 1 and the number itself. So we can say that this 6 is not a prime number. A natural number greater than 1, which is not a prime number, is called as a composite number. Now if you look at the number 1, then this number 1 has only one factor, that is 1. It is not a prime number because it has only one factor. For a number to be a prime number, it should have two factors. And it is not a composite number because it has only one factor and for a number to be a composite number, it should have more than two factors. So this one is neither prime nor composite. So now let's see how we can write the c -sharp program to do this. Here I have uh, created a namespace called as prime and then inside this namespace we have the class program and inside this class we have the static void main method which is the entry point of our program. So here in this program we will ask the user to enter the number to check for prime or composite and the user can enter any value. He can enter negative number, he can enter 0, he can enter 1 or he may enter a value greater than 1. We will check for all these conditions and we will display appropriate message. For example, if the user is going to enter 0 or negative number, we will say number needs to be greater than 1. If the user is going to enter 1, then we will say 1 is neither prime nor composite. And if the user is going to enter a number greater than 1, then we will check whether it is prime or not and then we will display the appropriate message. So here, first let us declare the variables that we are going to use in this program. Since the user is going to enter the number, we will create a variable and uh, I'm going to call it as number to store the user input. Now how we're going to be writing this program is in the beginning of our program we assume that whatever the number that the user is going to enter it is a prime number and uh, then we will check what the user has entered whether he has entered a zero or negative number in that case we will display the appropriate message if the user has entered one then also we will display the appropriate message. If the user has entered a number greater than 1, then we have to find whether that number entered by the user has any factor other than 1 and the number itself. If we find a factor, then it means that the number is not prime, it is composite. If we don't find the factor, then it means that the number is prime. Now, here in the beginning of our program, we will create a boolean variable and I'm going to call it as is prime and we will set to true indicating that we will assume that whatever the user is going to enter it's a prime number. Now after this we will ask the user to enter the number and for that I'm going to use the console.writeLine method and I'm going to specify the message as enter the number. User will enter a number we will read that using console.readLine method and the problem here is the read line method will return the user input in string form. If the user is going to enter let's say number 4, then this read line method will return that 4 in string form. So here we need the number in integer form. So we will convert the number in string form to integer form. And we can do that by writing convert dot to int 32. And after that conversion, we get the number and we will store that in the number variable. 
okay now we have the number that we can check for prime or composite now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna check what the user has entered so we will check the value stored in the number variable if number variable is containing a value less than one zero or negative number then we will display a message saying that number needs to be greater than one and then we will check whether the user has entered one so we will write the condition in this else if and the condition will be number equal to one in that case it means the user has entered one so one is neither prime nor composite we will display that message here and in the else part uh, we will check whether the number entered by the user is prime or not so we will come to this else part only if the user has entered a number greater than one so here what we're going to do is we're going to take the number and we will start dividing it from two why we start from two is we already know that the number one and the number itself are the factors of this uh, number so there is no need of checking for these two so we will start from two and we will check what we get as the reminder value when we divide the number entered by the user by two here we are checking whether two is the factor of the number entered by the user or not and we can do that by checking out the reminder value when we divide the number entered by the user by two so if we get the reminder as zero it means two completely divides the number entered by the user so two is a factor of the number entered by the users and that means the number entered by the user can't be a prime number because it has a factor other than one and the number itself so we will say number is not prime if we get the reminder as a non-zero value here then we go to the next number and we will check whether uh, when we divide the number entered by the user by the next number which is three whether we get the reminder zero or not if you get the reminder zero then it means number is not prime we will stop and we will display the message if you get the reminder as a non-zero value then we will go to the next number and we will continue to do the same thing now for how long we have to run this now let's say we have the number 10 then the range of values which can be a factor of this number 10 or the range of values range of numbers which can divide this number 10 completely are from 1 to 5 we can easily say 6 7 8 9 can't be the factors or this 6 7 8 9 can't divide the number completely of course 10 will do it but we already know that we know that the number itself and 1 will do it so now the possible range of values which can divide the number 10 here is from 2 to 5 and if you look at the maximum range in here which is 5 it is actually half of this number 10 so here we will continue to do this until we reach number divided by 2 so after reaching this number divided by 2 value and still we don't find any factors for the number entered by the user it means that the number entered by the user is a prime number if you find any factor in the middle then it means the number entered by the user is not a prime number so now here we will write the code in this else part let us use a for loop and let's create a loop counter variable and i'm gonna call it as divisor and i'm gonna initialize this with a value with a value of two and uh, here uh, for how long we want to run this loop we want to run this until this divisor variable contains a value which is less than or equal to number divided by two and after that we will increment the value of the divisor variable by one so here what we do is we will start dividing the number entered by the user by the value stored in this divisor variable and we will check what we get as a reminder so we will do that in a if statement if conditional statement and we will check what we get when we divide the number entered by the user by the value stored in the divisor variable and what we get as a reminder value whether the reminder is zero here we are using this modulus operator it will provide us the reminder value when we divide a number by another number if we get the reminder as zero here it means that the number entered by the user has a factor which is the value stored in this divisor variable so this number is not a prime number so we will change our flag that we have set in the beginning is prime uh, 
you know which we have set to true in the beginning now we will make it as false now once we know that the number is not prime there is no need of checking for other numbers we will stop it here so if we get a non-zero value in the reminder then in this if condition will fail and these statements will not be executed the for loop will continue and it will go to the next number and it will again check for these statements so once we come out of this for loop by checking out the value of this each prime variable we can say whether the number is prime or not so we will check the value here if each prime variable is containing true then it means that the number entered by the user is a prime number and we will display that message here i'm going to use a placeholder and uh, i'm going to say it's a prime number else if the is prime variable is containing false then the number entered by the user is a composite number here we have to provide the value for this uh, placeholder so that value is present in this number variable okay now we have uh, written the uh, program in here let's run this enter the number i'm gonna enter negative six it says number needs to be greater than one enter the number i'm gonna enter one one is neither prime nor composite enter the number i'm gonna enter two two is a prime number and this time i'm gonna enter six six is a composite number so the code that we have written is working so this is it for this video thank you for watching if you like this video then hit the like button if you don't like it then hit the dislike button if you want to say something then write that in the comment box for more tutorials like this do subscribe to the channel thank you for watching i'll see you later in the next video